This is a really important study. It's really clinically relevant, something you could take home with you and really um, put it into your own practice. This is a lot of patients who have devices, uh, have initial implants or generator replacements, have uh, are on anticoagulation for a variety of different reasons. Often they have atrial fibrillation or some other indication. Now, the problem being is what do you do with the anticoagulation when you're doing surgery? So um, this first study, this is a combined analysis of two studies, BRUISE-1 and BRUISE-2. BRUISE-1 compared um, uninterrupted warfarin compared to heparin bridging. And uh, they found that uh, heparin bridging resulted in increased rate of hematomas and you know, complications related to the surgical procedure. Now that's really important because hematomas increase your risk of infection. If you have hematoma, a higher chance of having infection down the line, which when you have a device in place, that could be a real problem because you have to take out the whole device. So, so they went on now nowadays, um, and, and we've actually already instituted some of that information into our clinical practices. Now they went one step beyond that into BRUISE-2. The investigators, now that we have wide availability of these direct oral anticoagulants, um, about two thirds of patients who are on anticoagulation may be on these newer anticoagulants. So what they did is they compared non-interrupted DOAC or direct oral anticoagulant use to, uh, to stopping it or holding it for at least 24 hours before the procedure. Now, um, the study was stopped in, in the first interim analysis uh, to show that the reason why is it would be futile to continue it uh, because there was no difference in rate of hematomas, uh, significant, clinically significant hematomas. Um, and the, the importance, it was only about 2.1% in each group. Uh, so that's a good thing, saying that we can continue uh, use of anticoagulants without interrupting that uh, and without putting patients at risk of holding anticoagulation prior to surgery. So the next step is they took a combined analysis of the two studies in the data in both studies and they looked at predictors, what predicted uh, significant hematomas you know, that were clinically significant. And they found very interestingly a, a few different factors, but one of the really surprising parts of this is how important the use of antiplatelet agents was with increasing risk of clinically significant hematomas. So um, we, I think all of us, when we, we practice, we, we see that patients are on, they may be on aspirin uh, for some reason, we don't know why. So we need to think about that because we know that aspirin increases the risk of bleeding overall. And if they're on an anticoagulation, uh, an anticoagulant, that would increase the risk of bleeding even more. Um, in addition, sometimes they're on more than one antiplatelet agent. They might be on, you know, they might have had a recent uh, or a previous PCI, or maybe they had a, a PCI in a stent five years ago, and they're still on these dual antiplatelet agents. So we need to reassess. We need to say, do they need those drugs? Because those things increase the risk of bleeding with reoperation. Um, so I think this is a, an important study, something clinically relevant. I think we have to look better and be more careful about uh, when we need to stop some of these antiplatelet agents, particularly if they're on two different agents. Um, our guidelines in cardiology, our, our interventional colleagues, you know, tell us that often, you know, they don't need to be on it beyond a year or six months, and sometimes even sooner if they're on an anticoagulant, they might be able to get off these drugs. This will definitely change practice. I think we've all wondered, we've started to use uh, contiguous, we've been using continuous warfarin with our practices and, and doing procedures on warfarin without any adverse events. Uh, I think we'll do, do that more and more now with these direct oral anticoagulants and I think it'll also make us more careful to look at the individual patients to see if they need to be on these uh, antiplatelet agents when they're on one of the oral anticoagulants. <laughs>